Hi friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app, but I also dabble in other online platforms and I sell locally. Today, I'll be doing a ship with me video. I do these videos every week and I go day to day. I share the different items that I'm shipping out. I talk about how much I paid for them, what they sold for and what my profit is. So usually there's three or more clips per video. So it may look like the video is over, but keep watching there are usually more clips to come so let's get started the first uh, pair of items sold on cherish.com and it is this pair of uh, mid-century 1960s art prints by Robert Lyons and I uh, used in the title mid-century 1960s vintage retro still life uh, what else did I put there bottles, wine, um, wood frames, a pair. And these ended up selling for $315, plus I charged a $20 packaging fee, which on Cherish you can charge the packaging fee in addition to the shipping fee. So that made my overall sales price $335, which is very exciting, especially because I got these for free. And actually, so this is a longtime customer who has been shopping with me since I had my original little shop. And they are a single couple and every so often they'll go through when they buy new items and they will clean out and just bring me stuff that they're not using anymore. Sometimes they'll want me to sell it for them and sometimes they'll just give it to me these were in a box of items that they just wanted to give to me, which I think is so sweet. Um, I have, because they've been customers for so long, I have found them quite a few specific pieces, furniture pieces for their home. I've also given them some pretty great deals on uh, pieces just because they have been good customers for a long time. So it's kind of a uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back type of thing. So I am going to finish packaging packaging these up off camera and I'm gonna add a lot more bubble wrap. I'm also going to put um, a couple of pieces of cardboard in between these because they do have uh, glass and I don't want that to move around and touch each other at all. So I'll, I'll move these off camera or out of the way so they don't get broken. So they sold for $335, I paid zero. So a church charges a 22% commission that made my overall profit $265.70. I'm super excited about that. Those have been sitting in my death pile, I don't know, for probably two or three years. I didn't really think they were that valuable because they were just prints. And I looked up some comps on eBay and the highest sold comp on eBay was 149, but I think I saw some listed on like first dibs, which you can't really take the prices on first dibs very seriously. Sometimes items will sell for those amounts, but typically those are really inflated prices. I listed these for $349 and I got that offer. So I eagerly accepted it because it was above any sold comps that I could see on other platforms. So I'm thrilled with that. The next item is a belt and it wouldn't be one of my ship with me videos without a belt sale or two. I love selling belts. This is by Brighton and I don't always do that well with Brighton belts. So I am number one particular about the style and condition that I pick up and number two, the price that I will pay for them because they definitely do not hold their value or Brighton doesn't in general. It has a pretty high retail value, but the resale values typically are just not that great. But this ended up selling for $27, which is actually higher than what I usually get for Brighton. I got this one because it was black and it had that, uh, kind of mock croc reptile print and kind of a Western vibe with the sil silver buckle. I listed it for $39 and I got that offer for 27, so I accepted. I had paid $3. 
So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $18.60. I forgot to get a box out for this, but uh, I will put it in a box later. So overall, I'm really happy with that. And that actually sold quite quickly, less than two weeks. Um, so actually the last couple of Brighton belts that I have purchased have done better than they used to. So I would just say keep your cost of goods low so that uh, you know you if they do take a while to sell, you aren't sitting on a big amount that you paid out for them. Okay, the next item that sold is this kind of funky pair of bug earrings and these are cicadia bugs. I picked up, let's see if I can get that to hold right, but I picked up a whole bunch of these at a, a sale and it was a fundraiser sale and I think someone had had a boutique and that maybe went out of business or something and they donated a whole bunch of these. So some of them still were on the little, you know, earring cards and they were by Larissa Loden. So when I looked up that name, it looked like uh, her stuff had a decent retail value. And I did see quite a few solds on Poshmark for these specific earrings. I ended up paying $1.50 per piece for everything that I got at that sale, which was great. So I was a little worried because they are funky, uh, but I sold one other set of B earrings and this set sold for $15. So I've already made all my money back that I spent on all 10 or so pairs that I got. So I think all in all, um, that was a good buy. Now everything is just profit. So like I said, they sold for 15. I paid $1.50. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit 10.50. Not a huge profit, but like I've said before, this was an easy listing. So I just listed, you know, took pictures once and then did quantity six or whatever. Um, so I'm okay making a little bit less profit because I didn't put as much time into the photographs and descriptions and all that stuff. So also I'm gonna find that box. I guess I'm not very organized today. Okay. So I had lots of bread and butter sales uh, besides those prints. And then I had one pretty decent bundle, but everything else was kind of lower priced items. Some of them had been sitting around for a while. So when I got those offers, I was just in the mood to accept and get things moving out, um, which is a good thing to do sometimes because then you can use that money to get new items and freshen up your closet. Okay, so the next uh, sale is a bundle of three items all pretty interesting items. So the bundle sold for $100 and this is the first item. It is this vintage kind of fuzzy uh, hunter's cap is what I put in the description. There's no name brand or anything. I put, I think I put hunting, golfing, anything that I could think of, 1960s. I picked this up at an estate sale. Excuse the noise. And I just got it because I thought it was funny and it was only a dollar. So sometimes I'll pick up, you know, just kind of funky pieces if they are affordable. And in this case, you know, it came in handy. So this guy could add it to his bundle and get this cool bundle of items. Okay, I did stuff that because it is going to be in a box with some shoes too. So I wanted to be able to protect it a little bit if those shoes rattle around. I will uh, stuff the whole box pretty well so that there isn't a lot of movement in there because typically when things are rattling around and hitting each other is when you get the damage that occurs. Okay, so I can't remember what I had all of these listed at, but the total 
bundle price was about $145. And this buyer offered me that 100. And I thought that was a pretty reasonable offer considering I had paid very low prices for all of these. So a dollar for that hat, hat. And then the next item is this ostrich leather belt and it is by Tony Lama. I picked this up at that same um, fundraiser sale that I got those earrings at. There was a lot of Western stuff at that sale. And so I paid a, only $1.50 for this. I did have this listed for $69. So this is kind of what elevated the price of the whole bundle. Because I think I just had the hat listed for maybe $30 or $39 just because, you know, it was kind of a funky piece. But these exotic leather pieces can have a high retail value. So that's why I price that a little bit higher than I normally do. And then the next item, another funky piece, and it is these men's shoes. And these are by Antonio Zengara. And I did look up this brand and they don't necessarily have a very high retail or resale value. I think I had these listed for like $39. And I got them at a fill the bag sale that one of our local churches does. And it's still a giant garbage bag, like the outdoor leave garbage bags for $5. So if you get quite a few pieces, that makes your cost, average cost of goods very reasonable. So I paid less than 50 cents for these. I really like keeping my cost of goods low, very low when I can, but as we all know, the price, thrift store prices just keep going up. And I realize that some of you that live in more, you know, metropolitan areas, it is even harder to find things for cheap prices or find things at all because there's so much competition. Okay, so don't you guys think that was kind of a fun, funky bundle? I think this guy has pretty interesting, neat styling. So like I said, it sold for 100 My overall cost of goods was only $3 for all of these. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $77. I think that's amazing. These, um, these have been listed a while, probably, I don't know, six, eight months. The hat had been listed probably six, eight months. The belt had only been listed a few weeks. So I was happy to, you know, get some of this stuff moved out. Let's see, I'm gonna put a thank you sticker on one of these. And I think that's really a great profit. Okay, the next item that sold is this pair of Western cowboy boots with a heel. And these are by Charlie One Horse. Can you see that? And that is a sub brand of, is it Lucchese? Lucchese Western boots, which is an expensive boot brand. This brand is also quite expensive. These ended up selling for $38 only because they were flawed. So, um, this one's not quite as bad, but the sole is coming loose on them. Um, I mean, really, they don't have much wear otherwise. So I don't know why that, you know, was happening to these, but I did indicate that in the listing. I think these would have sold for at least double that price had they not had that flaw. But I do think that a cobbler will be able to fix those relatively easily. I think you just, um, they can just glue that back on or I know they can replace the whole sole. I'm not sure what this buyer will have done to them and I hope that they read the description, uh, but it was, I had multiple pictures of that sole coming up too. 
So when I bought these, if I didn't already say this, I did not realize that they were flawed and I was actually really excited and I paid $7 for them. Uh, but as I've said over and over again, I always list flawed items, you know, unless it has a big stain right on the front that I know is not gonna come out. But if an item can still be worn or repaired, I will still list them. And honestly, nine times out of 10, they still sell and they sell for pretty great prices. I don't think I had these listed very long either. Maybe, maybe even less than a month. So I think I listed them 45 or 49 and um, they sold for $38. I paid seven. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, my profit was $23 and 40 cents. This may have been an offer to Likers, so this may have had discounted shipping too, but I'm not certain. Either way, I think that's a great sale, especially for a flawed item. So the next item is this Lululemon, I think this is called the Swiftly shirt, and this is for running or yoga or really whatever you want to use it for. I think this one had... Oh yeah, actually, I got this mixed up with a different one. And I, I got this at a small town thrift store and they were having a sale and their shirts were only 50 cents. So I need to change my, uh, my profit here. Um, so, well, anyways, uh, so I only paid 50 cents for this. It ended up selling for 30. I might have been able to, able to wait and get a little bit more uh, for this, but sometimes Lululemon sits for me if it's not a new style. So if I get an offer that I think is pretty reasonable, I will go ahead and accept it. And um, plus my cost of goods was so low on this. So like I said, it sold for 30, I paid 50 cents. So that made my profit $23.50. I think that's great. And this really hadn't been listed that long, maybe roughly a month. So that's a, a pretty decent uh, turnaround for that. Sorry, my sticker got wrinkled up on that one. How does Lululemon do for you guys? Does it still sell for high prices and quickly? I'm wondering if it's just because I don't typically sell or I sell more vintage items in my closet typically. I think it makes it a little bit harder for me to sell like modern mall brands or whatnot because I just don't tend to get as much money for them. Okay, the next item is this pair of AG jeans and these are a skinny cut, the Prima ankle skinny. They were a good size, size 29, uh, but skinny jeans, like I said, just aren't selling as well for me. I think I had these listed for 39 and I got a $30 offer. So I happily accepted that. And did I already say, I think these were listed for a little while. I don't know exactly how long, maybe four or five months. I had paid $5 for them. So that made my profit after fees and my cost of goods $19. I am happy to move them out so I can get new stuff in. And I think that's, you know, a decent profit for a $5 investment. Anytime I have a um, clothing item that is thin enough to fit in one of these Tyvek envelopes from the post office. I do like to use that just because it doesn't take up much space. And these are pretty heavy duty. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, the next item that sold is this vintage pair of 550 Levi's. These were a very high rise, kind of a mom style with a slightly tapered leg, kind of in between tapered and straight. And how you can tell that uh, Levi's are vintage 
is they will have this paper. Can you hear that? This paper type tag. And um, the newer ones have like a silky long tag. So these were probably from the 80s or 90s. I consider vintage to be uh, over 20 years old. That's kind of the standard in the reselling community right now. And I haven't, I've only gotten a couple of complaints where people don't, where my buyers don't believe that an item that's 20 years old is considered vintage. But I think overall that's kind of uh, the consensus for vintage. Okay, so I bought those for a couple of reasons. They were only a dollar, they were vintage, and they were a size 10, which I thought was a good size. And I, I just like to pick up uh, vintage items when they're affordable and, you know, make sure that their life continues because they're, the quality is so much better than modern stuff. So these sold for $21. I think I had them listed for $39, but they had been listed a long time. So I went ahead and accepted that. I paid a dollar. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $15.80. That is still a pretty great profit for a dollar. Oh, doesn't look like those are going to fit in there. For a $1 investment. Okay, the next item is not a very great profit, but I originally picked this up. Uh, for my husband. It is just this North Face kind of pullover sweater. And I don't know why this took so long to sell and why it only sold for 15 bucks. But I had this listed, I think, close to a year. And I relisted it. I sent out offers. I reduced the price. I did everything. Um, but it only sold for $15, but I was ready to get it out. I did pay five for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $7. I still doubled my money. Um, so that is, that's fine. You know, I mean, I think I got it at a thrift store that doesn't accept returns or exchanges. And that's why I didn't just exchange it to begin with because North Face really does not do that well for me unless it is a substantial like puffer piece or ski coat or something like that. So I don't really pick it up anymore unless it's like at the bins or a fill the bag sale for really cheap because I just don't seem to get a very high profit and it just doesn't seem to sell very quick. So I did have a question recently about how many listings I have to have the amount of sales that I have. And I do real realize that there are resellers who sell way, way more than I do. Um, but if you are just starting and you are wanting to get an idea of what you would need to have to get to the level that I am at, um, right now I have just over 800 active listings on Poshmark and on Cherish, I have just under 300 active listings. I, for a while on Cherish, I had under a hundred, but recently I have really been going into overdrive, trying to list more on there because I had a whole bunch of hard goods in my death pile. And once I started listing on there, I started selling some really great pieces. So I have been super motivated to keep listing on there. So I hope that helps. Just thought I'd let you guys know. Something else, I do list pretty much every single day on um, both platforms. I try and list five items per day on Poshmark and on Cherish five days a week for a total of 50 listings overall. Sometimes <laughs> that ends up being two or three items every day of the week. And on, then on Sunday, I list like 20 items to meet my goal. Um, but anyways, that's, that's how I do it just for an idea. 
Okay, well, if you guys are enjoying my videos, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's totally free, and I try and offer valuable information here that will help you make more money in your reselling business and will help you uh, identify some other things that you can keep your eyes out for while you're out thrifting. Okay, so there will be more, a couple more clips after this, and I'll be back in a couple of days to share what else I sell. I'll see you then. Hi, it's the next day and I have a few more things to ship out. I had a buyer request that I ship an item quickly and whenever I can, I try and do that for people because, uh, you know, I just like to provide good customer service and I do have a couple other goodies to share. So let's get started. The first uh, thing that sold was a bundle of two jewelry pieces and this person just has beautiful taste. Uh, the first item that sold is this vintage uh, Art Nouveau style brooch with a green stone. Isn't that just gorgeous? And the next item that sold is this semi-vintage, probably from the 90s or 2000s, sterling silver necklace with uh, cubic zirconia stones, and it's super sparkly in real life. I had these listed for uh, $49 each. The buyer liked a whole bunch of my items and then added these two to a bundle and I sent her an offer uh, for $75 with discounted shipping and she went ahead and accepted. I think that's a pretty great price for these pieces uh, because they both were really nice. Um, but I had had both of them listed for quite some time. Not sure exactly how long, maybe eight months to a year. So I was ready to provide a little bit deeper uh, discount. So she ended up getting about a 25% discount. And I am still happy with the prices that I got for these. I paid $5 each. I'm just going to flip that over so that stone is protected really well. So a total of $10 cost of goods, which made my overall profit after posh fees and my cost of goods $47.02. I might have been able to wait a little bit longer and get more for that vintage brooch because it really was a spectacular piece. Um, but... She seemed to like it and want it, so I decided to go ahead and let it go for a more reasonable price because it had been listed for a little while. For my jewelry, I typically use these craft uh, jewelry boxes from the dollar store. Uh, they come in a box of three, and there's three different sizes. You can get them a little bit cheaper uh, if you order in bulk from, you know, store supply places. But I like that those come in the three different sizes. So it ends up being maybe now that they raise their price about uh, 40 cents per box, which really isn't the greatest deal. Maybe I should look into ordering in bulk. But anyways, that's how I do it. Uh, and you guys can do it how you like. The next item that sold is this Patricia Nash wallet wristlet, and it has this pretty floral print on it. It was in really pretty great condition. It looked like it had been used, but still definitely lots of life left in it. I had this listed for uh, $39, and this morning I sent out 20% off offers to Likers with $5.95 shipping on every single item in my closet. I used uh, Posher VA to do that and you just tell it what you wanna do and click start and it sends out all of the offers. If I have a discount code or affiliate link, I will put that in the description box below. For some reason, I have not been able to get that to work for me. I just can't get the email to get signed up to come through. Uh, but I do highly recommend Posture VA. I use it to share my closet, send out offers to likers. 
uh, all sorts of things. It is really a great service. Okay, so this sold for $31 with discounted shipping. I had paid $2.99 for this. Uh, or three dollars so after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit nineteen dollars and seventy eight cents it didn't take a terribly long time to sell maybe three or four months i just picked it up because i thought it was such a nice wallet and that was a pretty reasonable price so the next item that sold is the item that the buyer asked me to ship quickly so it is this vintage kind of norwegian i put fair isle winter um, I don't, did this have a brand? I don't think this had any brand or size, but it's definitely wool. It's definitely vintage. It had these really cute little buttons. I picked this up at one of our local uh, charity thrift stores. And every now and again, if they are full up of a certain type of thing, they'll do a really deep discount. So they had sweaters for 50 cents. Their prices are very affordable there to begin with, uh, but sometimes they have these really great sales. So I picked up quite a few vintage wool and cashmere sweaters on that day. Let's see, I think I had this listed for $65. Um, but because we are, you know, winter is coming to an end, this buyer offered me $45 and I decided to accept that just because I don't want to keep these bulky winter items. I don't want to store them through the summer. And because I had paid 50 cents for this, I could let it go for a little bit lower price. So uh, after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $35.50. I think that's pretty great. And this really didn't take a super long time to uh, sell, maybe a couple of months. So that is it for today, but there will be uh, a couple more clips in this video, so keep watching. If you're enjoying this video, I'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Both those things really help me out. Okay, I'll see you in a couple days. Hi, it's a couple days later and sales have been pretty good on Poshmark, but Cherish has been pretty slow this week. Uh, so that's why I will keep saying over and over again, it is important to diversify your business and have uh, different types of items or the same items listed on multiple platforms because sometimes one platform is slow and the other one is busy. So overall, I'm still happy with my progress this week. Uh, let's get started. The first item that sold is the semi-vintage uh, western belt and i believe that this is crocodile or alligator printed not genuine uh, just based on the feel of it but i could be wrong and it's possible that i undersold this because it sold pretty quickly it sold for 34 dollars i did have it listed for uh 49 i believe and I looked up comps and it looked like these sold in the 30 to $40 range. But you know, sometimes when things sell quickly, you second guess yourself. I still made a decent profit on it. I paid $3. Like I said, it sold for $34. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $24.20. I think this was only listed a, less than two weeks. But you know, that's what you want. You want items to uh, come in and go out quickly. So you get your profits and your money back quickly. Sometimes we make mistakes. Uh, that is life, we're all human. This is going to, I'm pretty sure it's going to Texas, yeah. Uh, as I said before, I do really well with belts and Western style items. So did I say my profit was $24.20? And I do have pretty easy access to um, that style of item in my area. I'm in a pretty rural area and there are a lot of cowboys around. So I pick up that type of item whenever I can. Okay, another belt sell. This is just a brown woven leather belt, but it is by Fossil and it has a solid brass buckle. 
I do pretty well with these plain woven leather belts. So if I can pick them up for, you know, under $3, I will. They aren't always the quickest or highest seller, but I always end up making a decent profit. This one actually sold for $35, which is a pretty great uh, sales price for this belt. And it wasn't listed a really long time, maybe a month or two. I only paid a dollar for this at an estate sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $27. I am very happy with that. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched my videos before, I do great with belts. I probably have about 150 belts listed right now, uh, men's and women's. So I really think that helps with uh, how often I have belt sales because I have so many to choose from. I typically like to pick up vintage or genuine leather uh, belts, but sometimes I will pick up new belts or uh, faux leather belts and I do pretty well with those too. Okay, the next item is this fun vintage scarab beetle bracelet. Now this was uh, one of my personal items. I cleaned out my jewelry a few months ago and listed some of it. And this sold, this is a sterling silver piece and it ended up selling for $40. I really had hoped and thought it would, um, sell for more than that and actually it's been longer than a couple of months because this has been listed a while now that I think about it maybe more like six or eight months ago I did that anyways I was ready to let it go uh, like I said it sold for forty dollars I can't remember what I paid for this because um, it was you know from my personal closet but I am pretty thrifty, so I would guess that I didn't pay more than $10 or $15 for it, and I probably picked it up at a thrift store or an estate sale. Uh, so I am putting my cost of goods at zero for this, just because I don't know for sure. But my earnings after Poshmark fees were $32. That's pretty great for just a piece that I had in my closet. And oh, if I haven't mentioned it in this video, this is the other type of box that I use. It is from the dollar store and they're actually um, for food service, food storage. <laughs> I always say that wrong. Uh, they come in packs of 10 and they're about $1.29. So it makes them only about 12 cents a piece. And I like them because um, they're, you know, I feel like they protect the piece of jewelry and I feel like people could use them again after, you know, I use them for shipping. So I'm always trying to reuse and use items that people can reuse to reduce waste. Okay, the next item is a pretty good sale. This is a STS Ranchware brand purse with this fringe and it is really nice soft leather. I don't know if you can see here, but it is pretty distressed and has quite a bit of wear and some marks, but I picked this up at the bins. So I, uh, because of, you know, the price and that STS Ranch wear has a very high retail. This probably retailed for $250 or $300 new. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up because my bins is only, I think it's $1.39 a pound. So it's really reasonable. And this actually sat in my death pile for a little while because I felt like it was pretty distressed and I thought I needed to clean it. And I finally got into my death pile and just listed. I mean, I did wipe it down a little bit. Uh, but I didn't do like, you know, a huge conditioning and cleaning process. And this sold quite quickly, maybe only two weeks. And it sold for $60, which is great. Again, I like wearing or I like selling these Western style items. 
I um, in, am estimating my cost of goods at about $3 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $42.98. I think that's really great. And that just goes to show that items in your death pile or money pile, as I try to call it, they won't sell unless you list them. And I do, I do end up having pretty good luck with distressed items. So just go ahead and continue to list those. Okay, the next item is this gorgeous pair of Fry knee-high boots. And these were in really nice condition, gently worn. These weren't listed very long either, less than a month. And I picked up another pair of Fry boots recently and I was kind of on the fence about whether I should have bought them because those ones were $15. And usually Fry takes a little bit of time to sell for me, but I was going back through and, uh, oh, it must be real. Oh, it is really windy out. Sorry, I, I heard something. Um, I was going back through and looking at my sales for Fry brand. Just to kind of remind myself if it's worth picking up for me or not. And it does sell slower typically for me, but I always get great prices, you know, in the... 40 to 80 dollar range depending on the style of boot so i do think it's still a good pickup and maybe it's just the type of items that i sell in my closet that makes it take a little bit longer to sell but i always end up making a good profit so these sold for 60 i had paid 10 for them so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $38. I think that's a great overall profit, especially for a quick quick flip. How do you guys do uh, with Fry? Let me know in the comments down below. Does it sell quick? Does it sell for good money? I know it has a good retail and the quality is just beautiful on it. So that's why I always want to pick it up. Sorry, I'm adding a lot of tape to this because... This is kind of a tight fit and I wanna make sure these are protected. Okay, and I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but for my uh, boots, my cowboy boots or tall boots, I usually use, oops, this box number seven. It's kind of a larger cube size. And what I do is I just kind of bend them in the middle a little bit and then drop them down in there. If I feel like they're going to move around too much, I will add some air pockets or paper to that to help it so they don't uh, rattle around. And another thing I'm not sure if I've mentioned, I always ask my family and friends to save their uh, packaging that they get in their Amazon package. So those air pillows, any paper, uh, bubble wrap, and then I reuse it and I, always try and reuse items because one it's better for the planet and two it saves money because all of that packaging material is expensive okay the next item that sold is this pair of saint john pants and these are the santana knit and this is a wool blend if you haven't heard of saint john it is a luxury designer brand. It's sold at Nordstrom and Neiman Marcus and other high-end department stores. Um, it does have a very high retail and some items resell great. These only ended up uh, selling for $30. I would say I do the very best with the long Santana knit skirts or Santana knit in general. And then also the St. John evening, like dresses and jackets that are embellished. I do well and get good prices for those. But I do continue to pick this up because it is a solid seller for me. 
it doesn't sell quickly typically, uh, but I can always count on it eventually selling. And I can find it pretty regularly at estate sales or uh, thrift stores. This pair of pants, I went to an estate sale and there was a ton of St. John there and it was priced at a dollar and two dollars. So I just picked it all up because I knew that it would sell eventually. These sold for 30. I don't know if I already said that. I'm sorry if I'm a little distracted. I've got some other stuff going on in my personal life and uh, sometimes that makes it hard for me to uh, concentrate. Everything's okay, just a little stress. So um but these sold for 30 i paid a dollar so after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit 23 dollars so i kind of look at saint john as a bread and butter item i know some people are able to get higher prices on it and i think actually it does better selling on ebay than it does on poshmark uh, but right now i just don't have the bandwidth to cross post on eBay too, but hopefully eventually I will uh, do some cross posting there because it really, that platform has the most buyers on it and uh, I know people do really well on there. Okay, so this sale is kind of a want want sale, but these are gone. They took forever to sell. I'm talking over a year, maybe two years. I can't remember for sure. But I didn't originally buy these to resell. They are just a pair of Converse and they have this cool print on them. I actually purchased them for someone else and uh, they didn't end up working out for them. So I just listed them instead. So I paid $10 for these. Of course, I wouldn't have paid that amount had I been buying them for resale. But they ended up selling for $17. These were a kid's size. I don't, I don't have good luck with kid stuff at all. I know some people who sell more kid stuff and, and when they can get items bundled can do, can do good with kid stuff. So did I say they sold for $17? I paid $10. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, I profited a whopping 62 cents. <laughs> you know, like I said, I didn't buy them for resale, uh, but they are out of here and I didn't lose money on buying them. So all in all, that is okay. Let's see, that is it for today, but there will be at least one more, definitely one more clip in this video. Uh, hopefully I have some higher dollar sales to share with you because those are so exciting for me and hopefully they're exciting for you. Okay, I will see you in a couple of days. Hi, it's a couple days later and it's really been a great couple of days on both Cherish and Poshmark. I'm pretty excited. No huge dollar sales, but uh, some overall really great sales with good profits. So let's get started with what sold on uh, Cherish. I had three sales on Cherish over the last 48 hours, which is really great. So the first item that sold is this white vase and it is unsigned. Uh, but I did a little research using Google Lens and I found some similar pieces that were um, said to be made in Italy. So I put that in the description. I was gonna go ahead and read off uh, today what I used as my title. Uh, I put unmarked but thought to be made in Italy in the description. And my title was Vintage 1960s Italian Vase Floral Daisy White Pebble Lava Glaze. And I used that term lava because it had this kind of textured glaze. This ended up selling for $94. Uh, I can't remember what I had it. Oh no, okay, so it, it was listed for $89, but I also had the $5 packaging fee. Uh, Cherish lets you add a packaging fee in addition to the shipping fee. 
So this sold for $94. I had paid $3 for this. And it's funny, after I bought it, I was kind of like, eh, should I have bought that? It's, I, I didn't know. And it sold pretty quick, within about a month. So, like I said, I paid $3 for it after Cherish's uh, fee and my cost of goods that made my profit $71.42. I think that's great, and it was a pretty uh, quick flip. I'm going to package all of these up off camera just because I uh, take a lot of time to package them and I don't want them to get broken. Okay. So the next item, the next two items sold to one person actually, and she was an interior designer. The reason that I know that is that on Cherish, you can offer a discount to the trade, which means interior designers, architects, um, I think also other dealers can sign up and then they qualify to take advantage of that discount that you offer to the trade. So I always offer a 10% off a discount to them and I sell to a lot of interior designers. So I think it's really worth it to offer that. Okay, so this sold for $67.00. It actually sold for 62, but I also had that $5 packaging fee. To be honest, I am shocked that this sold for that much because it looks great here, but it has a lot of chips. And I put that in the description. Uh, I did touch up the chips. I also mentioned that in the description. So most of the chips were on this, the black area. And so I just touched them up with a Sharpie marker and you, can barely see them now. So I only paid a dollar for this, which is super exciting. So it sold for 67. I paid a dollar after Cherish's commission that made my total profit $52.36 for this one. Uh, this one is marked made in Italy. Both of them are. This one I used mid-century modern Italian Scrivito. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's S-G-R-A-F-F-I-T-O. And that is a technique of this, uh, you know, cutting out textured. I think that's, um, I'm describing it right. But I actually learned that uh, keyword from watching one of the Crazy Lamp Ladies sold videos. Do you guys watch her? I think she's just quirky and fun. So I watch a lot of her videos and I learn a lot from her. So I added, I had actually just added that keyword, I don't know, a week or so ago. Okay, so I used that and then Studio studio Pottery Vase Rimini Blue Black Glaze. And that rim, Rimini, also I don't know if I'm pronouncing that, is R-I-M-I-N-I. -I. And that, um, I believe, I'm not an expert, but I believe that is a, a color of glaze that they use on Italian pottery. It's usually used on other designer pieces, uh, but this was a similar color to that, so I used that keyword. And I also, of course, put Made in Italy in the description. Okay, and the next one, this one sold for $85. So it sold for $80 plus a $5 packaging fee. I had only paid four for this. So this is actually, if you're in some of the Italian pottery groups, this style of Italian pottery is, in those groups at least, kind of considered inferior. It's not really designer pot pottery. It was more uh, mass produce and kind of maybe even like a tourist trinket. So they don't consider it very valuable, but it is still really an attractive, uh, you know, piece of pottery. It has pretty glaze and it has that mid-century look. So uh, interior designers are still interested and, and people are still interested in this. So I still pick it up. And for this one, mid-century modern 1960s Italian Florentine. So uh, that's also a term that I've seen used for this. Again, I'm not an expert. And then I use that Scrafito Studio Pottery Vase Sea Garden Style Glaze. And the Sea Garden Style is uh, also on a designer piece of pottery, but this had that similar kind of green speckled look to it. So I use that keyword. 
Okay, so again, it sold for 85. I paid four after Cherish's uh, fees and my cost of goods. That made my total profit $63.40. I'm just thrilled with these sales. I think that I think that I got really great prices for these items considering what they are. And that's one of the reasons I like selling on Cherish is because a lot of interior designers uh, buy on there and they are spending other people's money. So price isn't as much of a concern for them. Of course, you know, you don't want to be totally crazy, outrageous prices. Uh, but if they see something that they think will work well for their client's decor and it's within their budget, then they'll just buy it. And I love that. So that's one of the main reasons I love selling on Cherish. Okay, so the next item sold on Poshmark. I also had some pretty great sales over there. This is a vintage coach bag, and this was an uncommon style. This is probably from uh, the 90s or 2000s. Again, I did some research on this to figure out the uh, style name, and I also found uh, that it was an uncommon style that you could get higher prices for. So this ended up selling for $110, which is a pretty great price for one of these vintage coach bags. Certain styles uh, go for even considerably more than this. So, um, and this was listed for quite some time. I think I had it listed as high as $169. But when I got this $110 offer, I thought that that was a really fair price. This was in really nice condition considering its age. So I went ahead and accepted that 110. I had paid $15 for this. So I did pay up a little bit. I don't always pay up for vintage coach bags, uh, but I, I think I did some research in the store and that's why the thrift store, and that's why I decided to uh, pay that much for it. So I would say this was listed somewhere around a year, maybe a little bit longer, but I ended up making a overall profit of $73. So I think that's pretty great. And I think it's worth the wait. I think that was called the carrier bag. I can't remember for sure. I'm sorry. I didn't write that down. Okay. And the next item that sold is another pair of these Christian Dior uh, demo glasses. They have the clear lenses like you would uh, see at the uh, optometrist office. And for those of you who haven't watched my videos, I got a whole bunch of these at the estate sale of an optometrist and I paid $5 a piece. It has been a really great uh, buy for me. I have made a lot of money uh, selling these vintage glasses. So these ended up selling for $110, which is amazing. I think I have already, I don't know, five or six times my money on how much I spent on all of the glasses from that sale. So that is pretty exciting. They were pretty easy to list because I just uh, copied and pasted the description and then added some additional keywords based on the style. So like I said, I paid $5 a piece for them. So after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $83. I have just been really surprised and excited by how well I did with this buy. So let's see, I think I bought these about six months ago. So they aren't, you know, they aren't selling instantly or anything, but because I paid so little for each piece, it's fine that I am waiting a little bit to uh, sell more because I've already made all my money back. So that is awesome. I forgot to make up my boxes today. I was excited to share with you guys all the sales I had because I, I just thought I had some unique things sell. 
So this, these were great. Uh, these sold in less than 24 hours. These are a pair of Nike Air 70 React. And it appears that this was just a popular color combo. And I looked up other listings and people had used um, the term mid-century color combo in their listings. And so I did that too. These were really in nice condition, only worn a few times. And I can't remember, I think I listed these for 79 and a buyer liked them. And I sent out a 10% off offer with discounted shipping and they accepted. I had paid uh, $12 for these. I bought, there was actually, I think the same person donated a bunch of their running shoes because I got uh, quite a few pairs of Nikes in these the same size and they all were kind of great, cool color combos. And I kind of, I don't always do that great with Nikes. Sometimes they sell quick for great amounts and sometimes they just sit there. But this turned out to be a good buy and it will pay, selling this one pair will pay for all of the pairs that I bought. So it, at this point, it doesn't really matter if they take a little bit longer to sell. So they sold for 71 with discounted shipping. I had paid 12, so that made my profit $42.78 after posh fees. I think that's great, especially for a quick sale like that. Okay. And this purse took a little while to sell also. This is by American Leather Company. I have had better luck with this brand in the past. Um, like it sold quicker and for a little bit higher dollar amount. But this time, this one took, I think, eight months or so to sell. But it ended up selling for $40. I really like the quality of this American Leather Company bag. And I think people who are familiar with this brand know, also know that it has great quality leather. Um, maybe it was just the size or the color combo that made this not sell as quickly but I only paid $4 for it. So selling it for 40 still ended up being a pretty great profit of $28. I think I would still pick up this brand if it's in good condition. I think maybe this was just a kind of fluke one um, that didn't sell as well or as quickly. Did I already say my profit was $28? So that's pretty great and honest profit. I'm not gonna complain about that at all. Okay, and then the last item that sold is a belt. Gotta finish it off with a belt. Wouldn't be one of my ship with me videos. This is a perforated and tooled leather belt. I just really liked the unique design on it and it was marked on the back. You see that it says saddle leather and the si size. It also has the snap here so that someone could put a different larger or specialty belt buckle on there. And people really seem to like to have that option when they're buying these uh, tooled leather belts like this. So I was kind of hoping to get a little bit more for this. Uh, but as you know, I'm pretty, usually pretty flexible on my belt prices because I really like to move them in and move them out like a bread and butter item. So I don't always hold out for really high prices unless they are a designer or very special item. So I have this listed for 39 and a buyer offered me 25. I decided to go ahead and accept. I did pay a little bit more for this than I normally do. I paid $5, but after plush fees and my cost of goods, that still made my profit $15. And that took just a couple of months to sell. So overall, I'm not gonna complain about that at all. It turned out to be a pretty good week. I had a lot more small sales uh, to add up to, or 
not small, but I didn't have the giant sales that I had had the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I'm very happy. Overall, I sold $1,640 this week. My total profit or my total cost of goods was $121. So that's a pretty good ratio there, or return on investment. So after all the website commissions and my cost of goods, my total profit for the week was $1,167.05. I'm super excited. As for those of you who have been watching my videos, you know that I'm trying to keep my profit over a thousand per week. And so far it is holding strong. January and February are typically really good months for me. So I am hopeful that I will continue to continue to have these great sales, but uh, realistically, typically my sales go down a little bit in the summer, but I'm just going to keep listing and stay positive and hope that uh, my sales continue to go well like they have been. Okay, thank you so much, you guys, for watching and for all of you that comment nice things on my videos regularly. I so, so appreciate it. You guys are the best. Uh, it really keeps me encouraged and excited about filming these videos. So thank you again, and I will see you next week.